Hello out there everybody, welcome back to the bench and today we're going to go over Vallejo, Vallejo, Vallejo. I've heard it pronounced two ways. This is their premium airbrush paints. Right there you can see it, premium airbrush color. It's an acrylic polyurethane, water based. And uh, this was uh, a lineup that was started for remote control cars. And as you can see some of the early labels, I ended up with an early label here. Um, it even has kind of a checkered flag look to it and uh, but they changed it over to this label to just premium as um, they've updated uh, their application for these and they now re recommend them for like motorcycle helmets and metal and resin and all kinds of stuff like that even re just regular plastics so um, I was curious and I grabbed a couple of bottles a few months ago and, and I liked it. it was a red or one of the blues and uh, I was really impressed it went down a little differently than their other paints and it and it's really durable so I figured I got a bunch of colors they don't come in a ton of wacky colors as you can see you just got your blues orange greens this is a metallic green that's a blue uh, metallic blue basic blue and they have candy colors they have some transparents um, I sprayed some of these I'll show that at the end and um, that's all here's a gunmetal which I think is pretty unique for this type of paint but um, instead of going over what the colors look like, I want to go over actually how they perform. So for that, we're only going to spray three or four of these on camera. And I have a couple off camera I've done, but there's no need to go over all of them because you can see they're just basic colors. We're not going to see anything shocking here. Um, I just wanted to go over how they perform because we're going to spray it on different types of surfaces. Other than my spoons, we'll try it on some clear plastic. A clear RC body. We'll spray a uh, color in here. Knocking over my moto paint in the background. This is a primered piece of a Gumpla. This is an unprimered piece. You can see it's got that greenish color. So it's how it performs over primer and just over plastic. Um, a fellow viewer subscriber asked how this will go over the, uh, the polycap type of material. So um, I have this spare uh, sprue here, the spare runner of, of uh, polycaps. So what you can see it's that bendable plastic. What we're going to do is I'm just going to spray some over it and then we'll bend it and see how it accepts, you know, being bent like that. We'll see how it holds up if it cracks. Then we're also going to spray it over this thick plastic uh, for sale sign. This is a private property. This is a metal sign. And in the end, here we go. I'm going to spray it over a plastic kid's ball. I bought this today at my local Target. And I wanted to see how it would stick to this. You know, I'm not going to spray my motorcycle helmet. I just like them black. I'm, I'm not touching my helmet. But uh, I know artists, you know, they like to paint custom helmets. That is one ball. And check this out. This is a Franklin, I think. Yep, this is a Franklin ball. And I got this one. It's a kid's Playboy. But play ball but you can see it's got like texture to it so I'm gonna spray some on here and we'll push the ball in and see how the paint can withhold that and that'll be a testament to its durability and that's why I'm not gonna go crazy more so for colors as we are to see how it performs and um, that's where we stand now some of them it appeared didn't need thinning and some do you're gonna have to play that one by ear each one is a little different um, but I, I thin them a little bit anyway you can see it right there. It, this yellow is actually fairly thin. And um, for these, I like to use the biggest needle I have when I spray these thicker acrylics, these urethanes. So we're going to go with my Badger 105 Patriot for this. Not the new Extreme. I haven't tested it yet. But the Extreme only has a 0.3 millimeter needle, and this has a 0.55. Um, so we're going to use that. We're going to use their own airbrush thinner. I always use Vallejo. Or Vallejo thinner with their own paints. That's it. I, I don't stray. It's the only brand that I use their thinner. And um, anything with alcohol in it uh, destroys uh, these paints. I don't know about these. I'm going to stick with this. But I mean, uh, the regular uh, Vallejo paints, uh, it, it just, anything with an alcohol base in it will destroy the, the paint. It gl globs it all up. So I've been sticking with their own. Um, airbrush thinner. I have plenty of it, so it's, it's no big deal. It's not too expensive. And I have the airbrush flow improver. If you're going to do long jobs, you put this in. It, it uh, 
allows it to flow along without sticking to the needle. Um, you could put a few drops of this in there. Matter of fact, you could probably thin the paints with just this. You probably don't even need the thinner if you have one or the other, you know. And um, that's it. We're going to clean the airbrush out with super hot water. So I don't need to show you that. I've done that before. I have a video just cleaning out uh, Vallejo from your airbrush. And that is with hot water. Now we're going to shake uh, these up. I um, took a few of these and uh, dropped some bearings in some of these paints. I don't even know if I have it in the, the blue yet. I'm going to do this metallic blue on camera. Oh, really good looking color. So let's just drop one in here. Um, these particular ones have really performed well for me. I've tried. I've had these a couple years. I checked some older paints. I sh um, and the ball hasn't rusted at all. So I, 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 um, I know it causes some people trouble. These have not. So that's in there. You want to uh, break out your four E's paint mixer. You can hear the... Look at that spinning around. <laughs> you can hear the uh, ball bearing going wild in there. And you always want to flip it over. And now you really can hear it because the vortex forces the ball. Oop. And that's it. You should be good to go. You shouldn't even have to shake it up. If you're adding it to the airbrush while you're at the booth, you know, give it a little shake to stir up the uh, the metal flake. But there you go. It's got a dropper bottle built, uh, dropper cap built right in. So let me get my paint shaker out of the way and that's it I think we'll do this uh, I don't know we're gonna check a couple colors but mostly it's the application we'll look at this gunmetal um, I'm not sure any other color maybe an orange I'll pick another color so I've, I've already sprayed uh, a few off camera so I'll show you some of the colors but as I said it's mostly to see its performance so anyway let me get these uh, prepped and uh, we'll head over to the booth but let me pause it and get everything out here and let me show you how we're going to uh, thin them all right, guys, here we go. Let's pour some in. From here, I can tell its thickness. Now, um, an early test told me that the metallics are actually uh, thicker than the opaques. And um, I'll show you that when I do one of the opaque colors. But you can see how thick that is now. See how loosely it, how long it's taken it to run. So with that, I'm going to put some thinner. Now, I'm going to say 60, 40, but... I'm going to say 70-30 with these, particularly with the bigger needle that we're going to use. Um, I've gone by ear, been, uh, by, by ear, by eye, and um, at this point, if you guys have been following along, you should be able to uh, get this done by uh, just by eye. Now, it's a bigger needle, so we're not going to have to thin the hell out of this stuff, that's for sure. It should be fine. And if you want, if you, if you have some flow improver, just put a couple of drops in there. And that's it. You'll be ready to go. Now you can see the difference in the thick thinness of it. See it? Before it was just hanging around there before it decided to flow. Do the pull up the side of the cup. So you're leaving some behind. It'll slowly run down. That's a good thickness. Now if you don't, if you have a 0.4 or 0.3, uh, I haven't tested them in a smaller needle. Um, I spray most of my uh, Vallejos through a, a larger needle. Um, you might be able to thin it down a little further. Like I said, the 60-40. This I did 70-30. 70, 70 paint, 30 thinner. Now, um, let me show you how thin the opaques are. Let's shake this up quick. I did it off camera, but we'll do it again. You can hear I already have a ball bearing in that one. All right. Now, this should be thinner than the other one. Yeah. Now, I still thinned it, but what I did was I didn't thin it as much. We'll do half the amount of drops for that. All right. Get another stirrer. And that's it. And with, uh, with these cups are a little clearer, you can actually see a little better. That is really dense uh, pigments in these. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, these spray a little better than uh, the average Vallejo. They, they seem to stick right to the paint, almost like a lacquer, not quite. But it doesn't have that beating up effect that a lot of them do have. All right, let me prep one or two more colors, and we'll head over, and we'll try it on everything. The balls, the, the uh, poly caps, and uh, we'll check the performance on these. Let me mix up one or two more colors. We'll meet you at the booth. 
All right, guys, here we go at the booth. We're going to go with metallic blue. I've already poured some in. Uh, I started spraying, but something happened to the camera, so uh, we got a couple of things done. But And we'll go ahead and show you anyway. Here we go. This is a white primered spoon. You can use any primer. I believe this is... Uh, Vallejo's uh, spray can. You see how nice it goes on? It doesn't really go on like their other acrylics. You, I, you really, you know, you could go the slow layering, but for this test, I just wanted to try it and look how nice it went on. I already started this uh, Gumpla piece. Let's continue it. I guess the draw for this would be if it's a durable, a really durable uh, acrylic. That would be its draw, I guess. But it just covered so nicely. Let's try some uh, polycaps here. This would be good if it works because um, you can kind of, used to be a product that couldn't be sprayed and now if you have anything that's exposed, that's a poly cap, at least we know now we can paint it. I'm hoping it works. It's going on nice. There it is, half covered. We'll put that aside. I started this Lexan body, so let's put another coat on that. This will probably look better with a silver backing. Maybe I'll do that at the end. I have those poly spray paints from Tamiya. I can probably back it with that. Oh, it looks good though. It does look good. Looks great. All right. I'm going to let these all dry. Let me clean this out. We're going to use the hot water trick, and then we'll flush it with my uh, my um, homemade airbrush cleaner for our acrylics, and it will come back with another color. All right. Up next, gunmetal. All right. Let's try it over uh, plain plastic. Oops, that's really coming out fast. See my new spoons, how they're cracking and stuff? Even on an acrylic. So something's going on with the new spoons, I'll tell you right now. So let's switch to one with a primer on it. Big difference. Now normally I don't think you have to. If you're putting it over a Gundam piece, it's whatever's going on with these plastic spoons, I'm not quite sure what, but I will figure it out. Well, wow, that went on nice. It went on fast. It layered quickly. Really good for an acrylic. All right, let me get another piece here, guys. And we'll try it on some unique stuff here. All right, here we go. Let's try it on some metal. I guess I'll have to cover the whole thing. We'll just do a little spot over here. I didn't really clean this, so it could have some oils on it. Who knows? We'll see how it reacts. Once it's dry, it's supposed to be good for uh, RC cards, which means... Uh, Nitro fuel and whatnot, it's resistant to it, but it went on really nice. Look at this. Can you see it? Wow, that looks great. We'll go over that at the bench. I'm really happy with that. Okay, let's go. Next one up. Let's try this clear piece. I 
I want to see how it shows through and how it bends, you know. Oh, it looks really nice. Oh boy, here we go. Here we go. How much I got in there? Plenty. Had to go with a dark color over the yellow. That's great. <laughs> a great idea for a test. I, I thought of it at the last minute. I was trying to think of what, what can I paint that uh, I can really attack it with, you know? I can bounce this thing around and see how it works. All right. We'll let this dry. And let me clean this out. I want you guys to know it cleans out really well with just hot water. I mean, it cleans out really, really good. Let me uh, put this in a spot where it won't get ruined while it dries, and I'll do another color. All right, guys, here we go. We'll do some uh, basic yellow. We are in. We are thin. All right, start off with the basic spoon. Real, real nice pigments. I mean, this goes on right away. I mean, no layering. Look at that. That's a really good acrylic. That's awesome. Let me put this out of the way. All right, let's try the Gumpel piece. This is not primed. Now, this has a lot of angles and curves to it, so we're not going to... Uh, pile this on yet. We'll let that sit. Uh, let's try some more of this. It's probably too light. Of a, eh, it's covering it pretty good. I was going to say it's too light, but it's covering it all right. Again, we want to see how it reacts when we bend it and bang it around. I'm going to put it on pretty heavy. Even though I know that's probably not good. Just how I want to test it, see how it dries. All right, so we get that out of the way. All right, let's try it onto this plastic. All right, we'll let that go, let that dry. All right, let's get Spider-Man in here. Obviously, no primer here. I don't have a primer that would stick to this, I don't think. I know there's a special one for bumpers and cars, you know. But I just want to put a spot here and see how it lasts. Not my best work. Again, I didn't even clean the ball off. Kids are probably playing with this thing in the store. There's going to be prints all over it, but hey, we'll see how it covers it, right? So far, so good. All right, let me get this out of the way. There we go. Find a good spot. Let's finish up this. Hey, maybe we've got a really durable uh, acrylic to go along with, you know, enamels. If you're looking for a durable paint for these gumplers, that's that. I think that's it. Let's put a little bit on the inside of this. Let's get gumpler out of the way. Sprayed so much on that. Uh, Spider-Man ball, I ran out. Now, if you're doing this for real, I would tape around the edges, you know, keep the paint from getting 
getting on the main side of it all. But that's good. I want to see how it holds up to bending and whatnot. Oh, the blue went out really nice. All right, let's clean this out. I got a few other colors I painted, and we'll go over the results. We'll see how the balls work out and uh, the poly caps. I'll meet you back at the bench. All right, guys, back at the bench, and uh, results are quite good. Um, uh, it go, it, it just, it sprays nice. Here's the blue, metallic blue. Um, it's got, a, it's, it just dries like a nice smooth. Almost semi-gloss. I don't think I was going to get a high shine out of this, being that it's made to go under urethane anyway, under uh, Lexan cars anyway. But um, I have something that's been drying a real long time, so we'll check the durability on that. Look how nice and even it, it went on this Gumpla piece. Look at that. This is through the clear plastic. And I can bend it here. doesn't break at all so this is pretty impressive now here is the magic we are trying to pull here on these uh, poly caps and um, it hasn't dried a long time which would help also but it's not doing it's not even cracking let me see if I can get the camera to focus on this Hold on, guys. Look at that. And I mean, I'm, I'm bending the hell out of it. Look. So this is the use, the perfect use for this paint. Saying, don't need another line of a paint. This actually has a reason. And that is, if you're going to be bending something or... Something's going to be taking a little bit of abuse. I mean, look at this. I imagine the yellow is the same. Hasn't dried as long as the blue. Yep. The Oh, keep you in focus. Sorry, guys. Look at that. And I, I just loaded this on. I, I just piled it on. I wanted to see how, if it would dry even. Just loading it on with a fat airbrush and just piling it without taking my time and layering it. And it's still, it looks good. Um, that's why I was trying to show you this bent in half, but don't need to see that demo anymore because the other one does that. Let me uh, go through this and we'll check the other parts, the car body and the rubber ball here. This is the gunmetal, really nice color. And I sprayed this on the plastic here. This is the shiny side, this is the side I painted. You can see how nice and smooth it is. Of course, if I bend it in half, no trouble at all. Fantastic. The yellow, I mean, that's a really nice yellow. Uh, yellow is tough to get, even with uh, good lacquers and whatnot. That went on pretty good in one coat. I mean, I really didn't have to build it up. Look at it on the Gumpla piece. I don't know how dry it is to check its durability, but I have some over here. Yeah, it's pretty durable. Yeah, it's durable. So, here's some other colors I tested. Candy red. Look at that. Now this is over the chrome spoon. Isn't that nice? Look at that. And it's durable. Now, you, now you're getting a, a durable candy color. I mean, it's transparent red, right? No, it says candy red. Now this I sprayed on the back of the spoon, and then I sprayed Tamiya polycarbonate spray can silver to back it up, and that's the result. I got a little bit of a pearlescent to it look, look to it. Can you see it? And then I tried over a variety of different colors. This is over a gray primer. This is over just a red primered spoon. You know, but it's durable. Here is the copper. Copper is right there. That's it over black. That's it over a white. Isn't that great? And this is durable. I mean, I just showed you what I did to the polycap, so I don't have to show you a durability test. Here's the light blue in the back. Look how nice and even it, it dries, and it's really, really strong. So like I said, it wasn't so much about the colors as it was, I wanted to test its durability. This is over gray primer, this is over white primer, and that's over a plastic spoon. 
That's the metallic green. Very nice color. So there you go. This is the opaque regular red. Look at that. That is a nice red. Look at that. That's the blue again. I was trying it earlier. All right, now let's try. Hold on, guys. I forgot about the Lexan body. Here is. Here's the yellow. Oh, I can't get in the camera. Hold on. There we go. Look at how nice. So, I mean, obviously I can, you know, do what I want with this thing. I can spray the back with silver like I did the spoon, you know, and get the same results. Put that aside. Let me see if I can pan out a little bit, guys. Hold on. All right. There it is. This was gunmetal. And it, uh, I bounced it, by the way, off camera for a quite a while and look at this <laughs> so i guess if you want to paint something on your car that's going to withstand i don't know how it'll hold up to weather but it will hold up to uh taking a little bit of a beating how great is that i'll get the other ones now they're drying around the in the other room in my dehydrator so i'll go grab those now but this is the only result i think we really needed to show how awesome this is this is a great test look at that I don't think it'll stick to the Spider-Man ball the same because it's smooth. But let me go grab it. Let me pause the camera, guys. And I'll go grab the other ball. And we'll check the difference. Yeah, guys, I got them. They dried up nice. Let me try and pan the camera out here a little bit. Here is the metal on the sign. Well, metal sign. Gun metal on the sign. And uh, no need to show you. I'm just trying to rub it out. That's, that's on there good. If you see any marks, it's when I threw it into the dehydrator. It was still a little wet. That's the metal sign. This is the plastic for sale sign. But again, I think we've already gone through this, you know. I mean, yeah, let's try this. <laughs> All right. Not a crack. Look at that. How cool is that? I mean, that's a good test. Valeo should hire me to uh, test their product. I know how to make a commercial for it. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Let's try the Spider-Man ball. That's the last one. And no, it did. It dried better than I thought it was gonna dry. Yeah, it's on there. It's on there. I hurt my fingers more than I am anything else. This is where I touched it when it was when I went to go put it on the floor after I airbrushed it. So that's not from earlier. Once it dries though, boy, nothing's gonna happen to it. So I thought it was going to be not as good as this, but it is. It's, it's, it's perfectly fine. So don't worry about your polycaps. I think you found your paint if you're going to paint some polycaps on your kits. And if you want to go with a gunmetal, they make a silver. I think they have a gold. they got the copper, which I showed you, the spoon. So uh, really, a really good lineup of paints. Um, I'll put a link below where I got mine. They're probably available wherever Vallejo was sold, but... Uh, I recommend their thinner, for sure. Hot water, very hot water, to clean the airbrush. And the bigger the needle, the better. You won't have to thin it as much. But look, they have a candy black, transparent black. This is candy dark yellow. So I mean, it was, you've seen the candy, so I mean, you can really get some nice effects. You know, if you do it in reverse from the inside of the car and then spray the silver behind it, like I showed you on the spoon. But anyway, this is a durable, great paint. All, it's, it's good for everything, everything. As I said, they, they recommend, mo mo they started using a motorcycle helmet, so they started advertising it as such. So I can see why, because this probably will last easily while riding. Um, anyway, guys, that's the test. Thumbs up for them. I'll put a link below for my brush, the paints, and uh, I'll put the mixer link too down there. I'll put it all down there. Um, again, I use this because it had a, a five, 0.5 needle so does my uh my procon so this has a 0.5 also you could use this if you have one of these also i i uh i just used that because actually it was closer and i didn't have my quick release on this one so i just whatever one i reached for i know i just needed the biggest needle i could anyway guys thanks so much for sticking through to the video right to the bitter end and uh please like it if you haven't and subscribe 
in particular if you haven't already because I have a lot more tests to go and uh, some good news coming up on my uh, Mecca Empire lineup of paints I have a special color coming out soon and a whole bunch of individual colors coming out uh, within weeks so uh, stick around for that anyway I guess anyway guys thanks so much for sticking through to the end uh, I highly recommend this paint go out and get some uh, particularly if you need it for durability and uh, I want you guys to have a great weekend and we'll see you in the next video.